Hi, this is John from the Rosenhead Jerusalem Psychotherapist. Thank you for joining us for the next post in our Torah and Psychology series. In this week's Pasha, the Pasha's Devarim, we read again about the story of the Miraglim. And I think this is particularly appropriate for this week because we've now entered into the nine days and we're approaching Tishabav. And we learned that the very first Tishabav occurred on the night that the Miraglim came back with their report. That night when the Bnei Israel cried out after hearing the spies, the spies report was the, was the night of Tishabav. I'd like to analyze this case a little bit more because what, emer what emerges from the Pesukim and from the Mepharshim is that there's a clear impression of low self-esteem. So what was going on? At the beginning things sounded quite positive. The Pesukim say that the Miraglim came back with a, good, with a positive report, that the, that the land was flowing with milk and honey, that the land that Hashem was going to give them was great and good. But things started to go downhill quite drastically. Suddenly we read that the Miraglim said that the people were were like giants, were huge, they were taller and stronger than them. They perceived, they saw themselves as grasshoppers in comparison. And they said that the cities were great and fortified up until the skies, up until the Shamayim. And they just didn't believe that they were capable of conquering it. And this is what happens with low self-esteem. At the beginning, you can, you can have something that you want, that you believe is worthwhile, but, and you want to achieve. But you're handicapped by low self-esteem. You just, you just don't think you're able to do it, to make it happen. And what does low self-esteem do? It changes your perspective. Everything seems so much more difficult. Everything seems so much more extreme. And this is what Rashi points out with the Pesukim that uh, relates the story of the Miraglim. The Pesukim used exaggerated language. Everything is so much more difficult in the eyes of the Miraglim. And then I think the crucial pasuk is the pasuk of the, the grasshoppers. That the Bnei Israel, the, the, sorry, the Miraglim, viewed themselves as grasshoppers. But the pasuk says that they viewed themselves first, they viewed themselves as grasshoppers, and then they were perceived by the other people, the people of the city, as being like, like grasshoppers. And this is what low self-esteem does. You put yourself down first, you lower yourself, you make yourself inferior, you believe that you're not capable. And then that's the message that you could transmit and give over to other people. Other people will start to view you, view you as being weaker and inferior and not capable. So how do you combat, combat this? The natural inclination is to say, believe in yourself, just have more belief in yourself. But it's very difficult to do that. Someone with low self-esteem doesn't necessarily view them, view the problem as being rooted in them. They see it as being circumstances, that the circumstances around them I mean, it's, more, it's too difficult for them. As we said, that's their perspective, not necessarily the reality. And also, they'll, they'll try, they try to attach blame to other people. They look for external excuses. And this, this emerges again from the Pesukim. That the, the Pasuk says that the, the, the Bnei Israel cried out saying, our brothers, the Miraglim, have melted our hearts. And the Balaturim remarks on this, that the Bnei, the Bnei Israel were, attach, were attaching blame to other people instead of looking, at the, looking into themselves. They said that our hearts have been melted because of other people. So what can you do with low self-esteem? Again, we could take something from the Pesukim. The message is given across that Kalev came along with a strong rallying call that we can surely go up and conquer the land. We can surely do it. His was a voice. Kalev's voice was a, vo was a voice of strong self-belief and high self-esteem. But this was quietened down. He was silenced. The voice of self-esteem, of high self-esteem, was silenced by the voice of low self-esteem. So what a person can do is, is try to attach themselves and surround themselves with people with high self-esteem. And they can act as a model to them, something that, someone, something that they can emulate and, it can have, and can influence them to raise their self-esteem. And slowly what might happen is that this strong voice of self-belief is indeed internalized and the, the small critical voice inside of you that's constantly saying you can't do it you're not capable is defeated by the by the voice of, of self-esteem a strong self-esteem that says yes you can you can surely do it and the research into in self-esteem has shown how self-esteem is a ubiquitous issue in mental health it's it contributes into a lot of areas of mental health it brings down it brings you down and makes you and causes a person to suffer whether it's Lower, whether it's anxiety or depression or even other mental health issues and the research has shown that if you can promote high if you can promote self-esteem then it can help to treat and deal with a lot of these mental health issues and indeed with the story of the Miraglim the influence and the implication of the story of the Miraglim is far-reaching it's it reaches 
many areas in our history. And we see that the Miraglim was the first Tisha B'Av, but also Tisha B'Av has been, there's been a pattern of tragedies in our history, in the, with the Beit HaMikdash being destroyed, both Beit HaMikdash being destroyed, and other tragedies in our Jewish history. So we need to believe in ourselves, we need to have good self-belief and high self-esteem. And that we believe that the Mashiach will come, we will see the, build, the Beit HaMikdash being rebuilt, and that we can surely make it happen. Have a great Shabbos and be well.